I just watch Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. And I wasn't a Harry Potter fan. I have my hair here in a weird way in honor of all of the Wizards. The character development, unbelievably rich. I can't believe that someone can create such complex characters and run simultaneously deep and resonating archetypal themes between different pairs of people all in one movie. I was fascinated. I felt very, very bad for the Ezra Miller person, Credence, who really lived a whole life of tragedy and then turned into the embodiment of evil, but then was killed as opposed to finding someone that they could trust. And all that time behind the whole scenes was this psychotically evil person who had really good reason to want to defend what they thought was the greater good. If you look at the movie on its own, you think, wow, yes, holy crap, like, he has a point, hold on. Why can someone so psycho have a point? That's scary, actually. Yeah, that guy was abused terribly, the Ezra, Ezra Miller character, abused terribly and repressed all of that anger and hatred and then trusted one person and that one person happened to be the wrong person after a whole life of being abused and tortured in horrific ways. And that one person also let him down and they just turned maniacally evil. And it's very sad because you think that person could be rescued, but they were psychologically damaged. They're just the whole life was a tragedy. They never knew joy. Uh, can you imagine living a whole life like that? It's very sad. And at the same time, there was this really likable guy, but he, he wasn't allowed to be with his love, but she loved him more than anything. So that love story was brilliant. Then there was another love story with a guy who really communicates with animals better than people. Um, sounds like, sounds like the Gabs. <laughs> so I reckon that he was on the spectrum, the, the, the nude character. That's my sense. Um, yeah, I would say it's pretty obvious that he was a brother who hadn't learned to practice eye contact with human beings. It was a story simultaneously of a guy with autism, I would say, who learned how to interact with people at the end of the movie and find someone who loves him for who he is and he has to change slightly to be with them, which I thought was obviously resonated, which I thought was awesome. And it was a story of loyalty, of what things are, someone is willing to do for what they consider to be the greater good and how it can be justified and how that can actually be scary because you can see how a good person could believe that if you really pay attention. Very scary stuff. I think Grindelwald is, to me, way more dangerous than Voldemort. In my mind, just psychologically, the guy was just, wow. Um, the story of love without permission. So like a Romeo Juliet type of story and how that can still win uh, right at the end. I thought that was amazing. Uh, and uh, the story of being tortured and how that can build up into resentment and that resentment can turn you evil if, if you enjoy the fact that it possesses you and makes you more powerful than, than you were when you're being tortured. You're an interesting man, Mr. Scamana. Suitcase. I think there's much more to you than meets the eye. Kicked out of Hogwarts for a dangerous human life.